Hello everybody and welcome to your 33rd Allegro 5 tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be learning on how to load maps into our program. Okay, so to start off, a lot of people uh, when they teach tutorials on the uh, on how to do this, they normally have uh, their map array within their program and then they modify it and then they show you how to do it in your game. Uh, and I, I know they're just trying to teach you the concepts and they're not saying that's definitely the right way but they're teaching you they're getting you into bad habits really fast and I'm gonna try and distinguish that right uh, it's not good to put your map files in within your game file even if it's a little game it's really not good and the problem with that there's two problems with that first of all Every single time you make one change to the game, you're gonna one change to the map or something, you're gonna have to recompile your code. It's gonna recompile automatically, and you might be saying recompile only takes five to ten seconds. But say you're trying to uh, to test something in your code and you have to keep on changing it over and over again, it kind of gets annoying at times. And also, the amount of times you spend recompiling it adds up, right? And it takes a lot of time. And if you're working for a, pro a professional company or something time is money you can't waste time recompiling when you really don't need to second reason is if you have a, a designer working with you you don't want your designer to look at your underlying code this is for you to see and the designer should be designing their own code most designers a lot of designers might not even know how to program so they might not know how your core functionality works uh, so it's best to separate the two so to start off we're going to be creating an f stream and our perm we need to include the f stream the permanent and we need our block size so if we look at our code over here uh our this is our, our, te our map text file so at the top we're going to specify the width and height of our text uh how many uh elements the basically the size of an array what our array size should be and then the zeros are going to represent the sky and the ones are going to represent the ground so it's a 10 by 10 map and each of these blocks is going to be equal to the block size so they're going to each each zero is going to be representing a block that's 40 uh 40 pixels wide and 40 pixels high right so yeah so if we go to our program we need to load in these values right but first we need to add in some variables so we need to load counter x set that to zero we need load counter y set that to zero we need our map size x and our map size y last but not least we need our map 100 by 100 now uh in our load map function yeah we need to create a node map function we're going to create a constant char and the file name so that's the file name the map file we're going to be loading in and normally after that we normally do uh put a pointer to the map or or just do a reference or whatever to the map to the array uh but since since we're using a global variable which is a bad habit but since we're using a global variable uh and it's a before the load map then we're just going to use that map instance but in most cases you're going to want to have the map the whatever the variable you're going to be storing the uh, values in, in this function and uh, yeah I say that uh, global variables are a bad idea uh, but for the, since we're not using classes then we're, we're being excused but if you want to kind of do it the proper way then you can uh, take this map code and we can put it within our we can just put it within somewhere in our main uh within our main function and then uh in the parameters we'll just put a pointer to the map. So to begin what we need to do is we need to open the file name where our map is stored, right? So we do open file and we're opening the file name. So we need to check to see if the file is open. Because if it's not open, uh if it's not open, you're probably going to want to do an error message or something using the native message box. So if it is open, then we want to store the the map size X and the map size Y. Like so. So if we look at our code, we're going to get the width of the height and the height of the map. Okay? So after we do that, and then we want to loop, we want to cycle throughout the text file. So we're going to say, uh, while we're not at the end of the file, then we just loop through it. So we're going to be loading in map load counter X load counter Y. And what our aim is to do is to resemble the layout that uh, resemble our array in the same layout that is uh, laid out in this file. 
So how are we going to do this? So we're going to increment load counter x by 1. And we're going to say that if load counter x is greater than or equal to map size x, then load counter x is equal to 0. And load counter y plus plus. So what's going on here? Uh, I don't know what the problem is. Uh, oh, yeah, because I already have the function name down there. Don't worry. Don't worry about the error for now. Okay, but if we if we look at it, okay, so load counter x and load counter y is equal to 0, okay? So first, when we use open file, we're going to be getting this value right here, and we're going to be storing it in the map array 0, 0. Once you go over here, we, we increment the load counter x by 1. So that means this value is being stored in the map array 1, 0. And it's, this is going to be stored in 2, 0, 3, 0, etc, etc. Once it reaches here, we reset load counter x back to 0. And we increment load counter y by 1. So this value is going to be stored in the, in the index 0, 1. It's going to be in 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, etc, etc. And therefore, we're going to get the same layout in our map file as in the as in our map in our map array as the same as our map file so if we so once we do that then we're going to we're going to need to draw the map so we're just going to make a, our instance of the draw map in here and our map file and the reason why we're not doing it up here is because we need to be able to draw primitives but the Primitives add-on comes in after in our main in our main function, so we won't be able to use the, draw the primitives if we if we draw the map up there. So we do draw map uh, our map file, and we're gonna do two for loops. So for loop to map size x. And uh, we're going to have a nested for loop uh, that's going to loop to till map size y. So it's basically going to cycle through our whole map, um, through our whole map file. So once we do this, we're going to create an if statement. So we're going to say that if map ij is equal to zero. So if that index of the map is equal to zero, uh, then we're going to want to draw a filled rectangle. And we're going to want to draw it in the correct position. So we do it by this. We say i times block size, j times block size, and we do i times block size plus block size. And j times block size plus block size. And for the color, we'll set it to a blue color since it's a sky. Okay, so we got that. And we'll just say else since we're only working with two numbers. So if the map ij is equal to 1, then we're going to draw a nice green color for the ground. Okay, so what is this saying right here? Okay, so for for instance, the the way we the way we loaded in our map is not the same way we're gonna draw it. We're gonna basically draw our map column by column. But it doesn't matter how we draw it. We just need to put each individual element in the correct position on the screen, right? So how do we do this? Okay, so for example, so we'll say i is equal to zero and j is equal to zero. So we know that we're gonna we're gonna map i j is the first element in our map. So it's this uh, this element in the map. So we need to draw it at the top left corner of the screen. So we do i times block size. So zero times forty is equal to zero. So we start drawing at a pixel zero, and zero a uh, j is equal to zero. So zero times forty is equal to zero. So we start drawing from zero in the y coordinate. Then zero times zero plus forty. Uh, is equal to 40 so we end drawing at the 40th pixel and 0 plus 40 is equal to 40 so we end drawing in the 40th pixel in the y position y column and then we draw the, that certain color so then say uh, at it loops again and j is equal to 1 so we know that if j is equal to uh, map ij oh sorry map ij is going to be equal to this element right here right 
so we know that uh, i still equal to zero so we're going to start drawing from the pixel zero and end up drawing at the pixel 40 uh, but j is equal to 1 so 1 times 40 is equal to 40 so we start drawing at the 40th pixel 40 plus 40 equals 80 so we end drawing at the 80th pixel so and therefore we get uh, our whole image drawn how we need it to be drawn so right before we flip the display uh, we're just going to draw our map and we put in our map file in there and for a load map so after we create our map I just set it a hundred by a hundred just in case you're going to increase the size of the map or ever or whatever for whatever reason uh, but you can set it to 10 by 10 if you want but we're going to load map map one dot txt and we're going to put in our map file in there and oh yeah I can't do that well, that should work and yeah so i'm i'm still getting some still getting some errors okay so i just fixed the problem by just doing uh just putting it map and then uh 100 in the second one and change that as well for the draw map as well and then when you change it there, you got to change it at the bottom as well. So if we run this program, uh, we see that we get the given map that we've gotten. So the zeros represent the blue and the ones represent the green. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching and bye.